Hello everyone! Welcome to my channel. As you can tell from the title of this video, I am about to quit my EMT job. Just some background story, I started this EMT job full time in September 2021, right before the pandemic. Actually, it was right when the pandemic started, but March of 2020 is when it started to pick up. I was basically an essential worker throughout the whole pandemic. That was definitely an experience. I learned a lot throughout the almost three years that I've been there. I took this EMT course back in college because I was pre-med. I took all the pre-med classes. I wanted to go to med school, but my grades were not good. I still wanted to be in the healthcare field, so that's why I did EMT. And as the years go by, I realize that it's not for me. I'm too anxious of a person. Just being on the road, driving for 12 hours every day with one person that you may or may not like is just not good for my mental health. I always have stressful dreams before going into work. And when I'm at work, I'm stressed about what my medic partner will think of me and if I'm doing a good job, if I'm gonna kill someone today. It just caused a lot of anxiety. I went part-time about a year ago and started a full-time job as an event planner. I was doing Monday to Friday full-time job, weekend EMT work. I'm just a little burnt out and I don't think I can do it anymore. I want my weekends back. I feel like this decision is mostly for my mental health. I need to just have more time to myself and take care of my body more. And yeah, I'm about to type up my letter of resignation and I'm nervous to send it out. Okay, I just sent in my letter. Ooh, why am I so nervous? No, oh, I feel so weird. Uh, why am I getting emotional? This is so weird. Oh my god. Oh my god, why am I crying? Okay, bye. Today, I'm going to return all my uniform. I don't get to keep any of it, so I kind of wanted to film this video of me wearing all of this stuff to keep as a memory. This video is probably going to be very boring, <laughs> but I just want to show you like what I wear to work. So this is my uniform, and I have this badge. Ta-da! Okay, this is what I wear every day for my shift, and I bring this duffel in the ambulance. So in this bag, we have to have a spare change of a uniform top and uniform pants just in case blood gets on it or urine gets on it or any other bodily fluids. So let's do what's in my bag. First thing is this high-vis jacket. It's gonna get so hot in here. This high-vis jacket is for rainy days. And if it's nighttime and I'm on the freeway, oncoming cars should be able to see me so they don't hit me. And with this high-vis jacket, there's matching pants to go with it. I have never worn this. It goes over your uniform pants. And last thing is a helmet. This is a must wear on the freeway because gotta protect the head. And then there are these cool goggles. <laughs> Ta-da! So this is a complete outfit. This is a thinner one for summer. This is a thicker one. As you can see, I haven't even worn it. Okay, also in my bag is a radio strap. We have to wear radios um, while we work, so it fits perfectly in this little compartment. You wear it like this, and then hook this to your pants so that it doesn't sway around. Okay. In my bag, I also have my stethoscope which I rarely use, and these gloves. One of the reasons why you would use this is if you're going through patients' belongings, you don't want to touch a needle and get your fingers pricked. I have never worn these. I probably should have it on one of the calls because I did feel something going through my gloves, but I don't think it was a needle. So that is 
the last few things. This is my favorite jacket. Very comfy. And then this quarter zip is for winter. Very thick and warm. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that try on haul. You can still see the imprint of the goggles on my face, but if you want to see more EMT content, watch my latest short for a day in the life. Packed and ready to go. Returning my badge to so sad. So I just returned my uniform at the station and the person who collected my uniform was so sweet. She asked me where I'm off to and I was like, oh, I'm going to tech. I don't think healthcare is for me. And then she said that she's been in healthcare for 30 years, I believe. She like told me about how she like loves helping people. We were just like kind of getting to know each other. When I walked out of the office, I got emotional again because I realized that I won't be helping people anymore. As you saw from the first clip, I got really emotional and after I stopped the video, I had to sit on my couch and think about why I was getting all teary-eyed and I even brought out my journal and I was like writing stuff down. But I think a big part is because I went into the healthcare field, like I wanted to be a doctor and I love helping people. I think it just hit me that I won't be able to do that. And also I have been doing this for so long. It felt like a very big part of my life and it feels like a chapter is ending. And while I was doing it for a few years, I complained a lot about it because I was so stressed out. I was complaining about my partners, if they treated me badly. I was very stressed and sad and I had low confidence. But now that it's over, I wish I appreciated it more, had more fun. And I did have a lot of good times, which I will miss. So as you can tell, my thoughts are still very jumbled. I'm not very good at processing life changes, but yeah, that's, that's the end. Kids, I'm filming a video. Hey. Anyway, I don't really know how to end this video because it's kind of all over the place and... Kids, simmer down. Hey, hey, Griffin, please. Anyway, I don't know how entertaining this video is to watch. It's kind of more of like a diary entry for me because I just want to... Sorry, they're being so distracting. I just wanted to close this chapter of my life and document it. Hopefully this little segment will make the video a little more interesting. I'm going to talk about some misconceptions of the 911 system, some things that I've experienced during my time at 911. So first common misconception of 911 system is that we still use mouth to mouth for CPR. That is not true. We use this device called the BVM, which stands for bag valve mask. I'll place a picture right here. So that goes over the, the patient's mouth like this, and then we pump air into their mouths. So we do not have to do mouth to mouth. Yeah, that that is no longer. I told my friend about my first day at work as a trainee and I had to do CPR and she thought I kissed the person, which I did not. I just did chest compressions while someone else used the BVM. But yeah, that is one common misconception. Second, we do not always go lights and sirens to a call if your call is not an emergency. Let's say you stubbed your toe and you can't drive yourself to the hospital. We will still come, we have to come, but we might go code two, which is no lights and sirens, following all the traffic laws to your location, and then we evaluate you. If you're having a serious emergency, then we will go code three, lights and sirens, to the hospital. If you're not in a life-threatening situation, we will most likely go code two, no lights and sirens, to the hospital, and you will wait in line like the rest of the people at the emergency room. The only difference is you're gonna be waiting in an ambulance. You could be waiting hours because 
people who are in more life-threatening situations will go before you. So don't think that if you call the ambulance, we are going to speed to you and we will get you to the hospital as soon as possible and you will be first in line and cut everybody. That is not the case. Next, I will talk about my craziest call because that's always a question that people ask. And just a tip, I don't think you should be asking EMTs, paramedics, police what their craziest call was because it could have been a very traumatic experience for them and you don't want them to recall it or bring up any negative emotions from that. So I would refrain from asking that question, but I am willing to share my crazy story. So we show up at this residential house and police has already blocked off the house with yellow tape, which was a bad decision on their part because all the emergency personnel had to go under the yellow tape with the gurneys and their bags and everything, but it was so hectic, I don't really blame them. There were people laying on the grass outside of the house bleeding, and when we go into the house, there was blood everywhere, and the patient that we were assigned to was laying on the couch. They were bleeding from the arm and I believe from the back. So I put a tourniquet on their arm to prevent them from continuing to bleed out. And a tourniquet is basically like a very tight belt that you can secure around the limbs so that you don't continue to lose blood. I don't know if I'm explaining this very well. I think there were a total of four patients, three of them got stabbed one of them was hyperventilating having an anxiety attack because of what happened so basically what happened was that this was a friend's gathering and an ex showed up and saw that their partner was with their now current partner so this ex took out a knife and started slashing and stabbing everybody and people were running around. I believe that they caught the suspect, but that was basically what happened. That was the first time I used a tourniquet, which was cool. I like when I can use those life-saving skills on an actual patient. And our patient, he was stable when we got to the hospital. I believe everybody was okay. That was one of the craziest calls that I've been on. I want to talk about what the most rewarding call was. There is no one specific call that I recall being very rewarding. If I thought hard enough, I would be able to come up with one, but I just, I can't think of it right now. But the situations in which I feel like I'm really helping people out and why I decided to be an EMT in the first place is when we have a Mandarin speaking patient and they can't speak any English and they're very frustrated because they can't tell us what's going on. And sometimes the firefighters are very impatient with people who can't speak English because they can't tell what's going on. So it's very rewarding for me when I get to translate and help my people out. And yeah, so I think that will be the end of this video. This was probably very boring to watch. I apologize. Please subscribe to my channel to join me on my future adventures. That is it. Subscribe. Griffin said so, so you're gonna have to do it. That is all.